Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be taking a look through this fantastic Penguin science fiction postcard box set, as well as looking at some of the vintage science fiction gems from my own vintage Penguin collection. And boy oh boy, we've got some beautiful books to look at today. So I think you're going to really love it. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Right then, so what actually brought me to digging out my Penguin science fiction books was this lovely new postcard box set. Now I say new, I think it's been out for about a year or so. So it was uh, certainly not brand new, but it was new to me. And uh, as you can see, I've not even opened mine yet, but um, on the back there, it does have a, a tantalizing glimpse of the goodies that are contained within. A collection of hundred postcards featuring science fiction book cover designs, celebrating the iconic, bizarre and mind blowing best from 80 years of Penguin's publishing history. Well, we're not gonna deny that. I mean, uh, certainly they've had some fantastic stuff. I mean, I wouldn't have said, um, I wouldn't have called Penguin a science fiction publisher, but it was only when you sort of look back over their list um, that you see, well, in actual fact, they did publish quite a bit of sci-fi. Um, certainly one of my all-time favorite authors, John Wyndham, and, all-time favourite books, Day of the Triffids, was a penguin, right from the very start, and uh, even a Michael Joseph hardback. So um, I guess, you know, they definitely did have sci-fi, and um, it's just you wouldn't think of Penguin as a science fiction publisher, but here they certainly are. So I've actually got, we've got this to look through, and then I've pulled out perhaps about 30 or so Penguin science fiction books that I could easily get access to in my own collection. Certainly not all my uh, Penguin sci-fi, but you know, a smattering and, and a representation of them all. Um, I haven't pulled out all the John Wyndham's, although I have them all, um, or you know, all the H.G. Wells's and things like that, because there's just too many of them. And I've already done sort of specialist videos on that, but um, I have pulled out a nice little selection, which I do think you'll enjoy. And we'll sort of have a look at those original books whilst we work our way through this original box set, which um, already is fantastic. I just love it. I love it. These are the sort of the, the late 60s, early 70s, or early to mid 70s, I believe, titles. So um, let's get the postcards out first of all. Like so. And we'll slip them back in there as we sort of go along. Let's have a little look at the introduction here. So it says, Penguin have been publishing science fiction from the very beginnings of its history with Samuel Butler's Erlhome, 1935. That was, I think, number 20. And Olaf Stapledon's Last and First Men, which was a, actually a pelican. So I didn't think to pull that one out. Um, but yeah, no worries. Um, I'm sure it'll be in here. Um, later science fiction covers through the 60s and 70s inspired by surrealism, expressionism, psychedelia, and pop art. Charting science fiction emerges as a literary force whilst embracing the spirit of its pulp excess. This collection features covers from some of the heavyweights of the genre, H.G. Wells, Aldous Huxley, I didn't think of pulling any of him, J.G. Ballard, Philip K. Dick, Kurt Vonnegut, as well as celebrating some of the weirdest and most wonderful cult classics you may or may not have heard of. This collection will make you smile or shake your head in wonder. It is something to be shared and treasured. Well, I'm very much looking forward to going through this. Um, now, I have to say there is a superb website devoted to Penguin Science, which has been around quite a few years now. And um, I will, of course, link to that one in the uh, in the description down below. So you can have a look and maybe uh, check out some of these books in a bit more detail. So let's just start going through the first one. So the Penguin Sci-Fi Omnibus, um, edited by Brian Aldiss. Now, Penguin published three volumes of the science fiction omnibus, and I did pull them all out. So let me just grab those. Yeah, so here they are. So these are the three original volumes that Penguin published. So there's yet more. There's Penguin Science Fiction, more Penguin Science Fiction, and yet more Penguin Science Fiction. And they were all edited by Brian Aldiss. You can sort of see the uh, sort of cover designs changing over time there. I always remember there's a very famous, well, I think it's famous, picture of uh, Jimi Hendrix. Now, it looks like he's sat in a coffin or a casket of some sort, maybe a big box, but there's a copy of Jimi Hendrix reading a copy of Penguin Science Fiction. And um, I remember posting that picture on my Penguin Book A Day Instagram page years ago, about five, six years ago, and Brian Aldous's son 
uh, messaged me and said, I've never seen that picture before. And I gave him a little bit of history about it in the book. Um, and yeah, it's a fantastic picture. So I'll try and find that and pop that into the video uh, right now for you to have a look at. But those are the, the first three books. And they're just sort of sci-fi anthologies, as you would expect. Yeah. And just a collection of uh, shorter sci-fi stories. And I'm guessing then that this postcard is of a, an omnibus of all three, or maybe a best of the all three. I mean, I've never seen it. Uh, 1973. Yeah, classic cover by David Pelham. And he did quite a bit for Penguin. Really bright, bold, sort of almost psychedelic, although it's just you know, quite a bit past the psychedelic era. Um, yeah, really, really nice. Blimey, well, that was a good one to start, wasn't it? The very first one. And Kurt Vonnegut, Cat's Cradle. This is a slightly later one. End of the world scenario, I think. Covered just in Todd, 1983. Ah, well, Day of the Triffids. Well, look, um, I think we'll get through a few cards before we look at that. So I'm going to pop this Day of the Triffids down a little bit because I've got a few books to tie in with that one. Philip K. Dick, Time Out of Joy. That's a classic, isn't he? I, I really like Philip K. Dick. Um, you could sort of keep collecting him forever, couldn't you? There's been so many editions. 1988, covered by Tom Stimson. Um, yeah, you could keep collecting him forever. There's been so many Philip K. Dick titles. Eight Man Spaceman. This one I don't recognise. Edited by Lee Stover and Harry Harrison. Cool. Well, we know Harry Harrison was a... Uh, a Penguin author at this point, another David Pelham cover. Now it is a shame that I, my own Penguin collection generally cuts off, you know, I collect right from when Penguin started in 1935 up to about when ISBNs came in, which was 1969-70. Although for sci-fi, I, when I see them nowadays, I do pick them up because I love the covers so much. Um, so I have actually started to pick up the penguins, which are a little bit past my normal period. OK, so I've just reset the uh, the camera there and also the lighting because I was getting a bit of interference uh, with these uh, sort of shiny, shiny covers. So hopefully this is uh, a little bit better. Um, Cat's Cradle then, so it's like a, a bomb coming down there. This was a, a David Pelham cover from 1973. That's cool. And uh, another Harry Harrison, Bill the Galactic Hero. That was a cool one, wasn't it? That was quite early, yeah, 1977, covered by Mike Little. Well, here's a cool one. Michael Moorcock, A Cure for Cancer. And they do, these ones here do have a really distinctive style. So David Pelham one. Keith Lomer, A Plague of Demons. Now this one I did actually bring down, so let's uh, dig my original of that one out. So here's my original copy and there's the, uh, the postcard. Is this, the, this was the chap, wasn't it, who did the illustrations for the Yellow Submarine? I'm pretty sure it was. But it says Alan Aldridge. Was that the same guy who did the Yellow Submarine artwork? Nice all the same. 1967 it was first published as a Penguin book. Let's slip that one over there. That's nice. And James Blish, another great, great uh, author, went on to do a lot of the Star Trek books, of course, just prior to this. Another David Pelham cover from 1974. It's an actual fact. Um, there was a lot of Star Trek that he'd already had published by this point. I did bring one James Blish book down, but it's not not that one, but we'll show it now. But I've got no idea if Penguin are going to include this in the box set. But it was this one here, which was a case of conscience, which is a bit earlier than the ones there. It's Penguin 1809. Well, quite a nice copy of this one, actually. I have to say, nice, nice uh, white pages. Um, 1963. That's a real beauty, that one, actually. Alfred Bester. 
the demolished man. Yeah, that's a cool one. David Pelham again. Cool, he's getting the lion's share, isn't he? And it doesn't matter because they are so cool. Final stage, the ultimate science fiction anthology. Mm. David Pelham again. Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> Locality. And that is a classic Harry Harrison, isn't it? That one, make room, make room. And uh, once again, I do believe I brought that one down. So let's dig the original out. Yeah, so there we are. There's the two, the science fiction postcard and the original sci-fi book. Very, very nice. I thought my copy of this was a little bit better, but I think I've had it ages, like years and years. I don't think it's one that um, I've ever had more than one copy of. This is also from 1967. Definitely a classic. And here's an author I very much like, is Frank Herbert. Author of the Dune series, but they were published by New English Library. So this is a non-Dune book, Destination Void. Covered by J. Patang, Patagno, 1977. Now, this is a very early one. Um, I didn't bother bringing my copy of this time, but it's Penguin number 20. Erwan. Sort of spe it's not you wouldn't call it sci-fi because I guess it didn't really exist back then. It's more sort of speculative fiction. Now this one I did bring down, which was uh that's the second printing of the War of the Worlds. So I've got my first and second printings of this one. So in fact that that must be an even later later printing again. This is 1962, Virgil Burnett. This is the one which has got that same sort of illustration. My copy says 1964. So maybe with that jacket, it first came out in 1962. This is the Penguin first edition. Penguin 570. Published 19, first published as a Penguin, but 1946. This is an early Penguin from 46, and it was part of a set of 10 H.G. Wells books that were all published at the same time. There was 100,000 of each of the first editions published, which uh, meant that Wells was a million-selling Penguin author right off the bat. Absolutely fantastic. Certainly one of my uh, favourite authors, and while we're here, I might as well do the other couple of H.G. Wells's that I've got, although I don't know whether these will be coming up in the... Um, in the postcard box set, but we've got the uh, the time machine, probably my favourite um, H.G. Wells story of all. Absolutely loved it since I was a kid. I had a fantastic unabridged audio book of it, which was read by Robert Hardy. I remember as a kid. Um, that's not H.G. Wells. Then we got this one, yeah, The Invisible Man, another absolutely stonking, brilliantly brilliant. And you've got to say it is science fiction. This was this is the 1930s. Well, this one was, uh, I think, 37, 38 for Penguin. But it, when did it first get published? Even earlier than that, wasn't it? Yeah, so the Penguin edition, 1938. The first issue, June 1926, in hardback. But that's the first uh, Penguin of that one. And it's one of my uh, all-time favourite Penguins. That. So here's one I don't recognise. The Circus of Dr. Lau. Charles G. Finney. Not recognising that one at all. 1966, covered by Alan Aldrich. Another John Wyndham. Seeds of Time. Now, I did bring down a few Wyndhams apart from Day of the Triffids, which is my favourite. Oh, and I did pick that one, I did bring that one down with me, so let's just have a little look and see compare the editions so yeah so that's the illustrated one obviously perhaps makes a better postcard than the first one that I've got here so nine fanta fantastic stories by the creator of the Triffids so yeah a little uh, John Wyndham anthology there we are nine short stories so the first was 1959 
And uh, this later one that they put on the postcard, 1964, covered by John Griffiths. This is a Ballard classic, The Terminal Beach. Great book, that one, covered by David Pelham. Robert Heinlein. This one I haven't got. Um, a lot of his sci-fi came out published by Pan, in actual fact, of which I've got, I think, all of it. But this is one I've not seen. The Unpleasant Profession of Jonathan Hogue. Alan Aldridge again, 1966. Yeah, that's not one I've come across, sadly. Now, this was a little... Uh, Anthology again, I believe, The Outward Urge, John Wyndham and Lucas Parks. Um, did I bring this one down? Yeah, so here's the uh, original and there's the, the postcard. Covered by John Griffiths, 1962. I'm pretty sure this is just another little sci-fi anthology. Well, it's actually got five bits, so uh, maybe written published with chapter five by science fiction book club 1961 not sure the history of that one um written in collaboration with lucas parks as a technical advisor i see oh, so it looks like lucas parks was some sort of maybe like a scientist and uh wyndham called on him to uh help out now this one i am surprised this in here and i did actually bring down my original but now this is actually quite a, a scarce wartime penguin um, and I've got a particularly nice copy of this so I am very very pleased um, yeah for number 461 and uh, my copy is pretty nice this from what is a scarce period of penguin 1944 so as you can see it's a, a wartime one it's printed on very very thin paper as uh, Britain got pounded by uh, bombing during the blitz and its aftermath I think this is another one of those ones which is sort of um so i think it's isn't the iron heel sort of set 700 years into the future it's a very early what if sort of style book um yeah it's interesting that they've got 1945 so although the cover didn't change um they have got the very later printing the, the printing from the following year rather than that 1944 i would imagine because their copy of the night or maybe the penguin archives copy of the 1944 edition is perhaps not in the greatest of shape okay then so i had a little reset of the camera there to give us a little bit more room and uh, we can crack on so i reckon we're probably over halfway now um so the joyous invasions theodore sturgeon another an Aldridge cover. Boy, he was busy, wasn't he? And now this one will take a little bit of time to go through. So this is Day of the Triffids. Now, if you've been watching my channel, you're probably aware that Day of the Triffids is my all-time favourite novel. And I've got, in total, about 20 different editions of Triffids. Um, I brought down just a, uh, well, a selection of my Penguin ones um, just to show today, because I didn't want it to be too... John Wyndham heavy, um, but I do do love it. So this is the uh, the first edition. This is Penguin's first printing of it, number nine nine three, and this one first came out in nineteen fifty four. So I believe that was like a year after the hardback. Then we've got the one that was pictured on the postcard here. This is like the second jacket cover illustration by John Griffiths. My edition was, uh, well, it's dated 65. The postcard one is dated, yeah, also 1965. Then I've got a few other ones here. So this was the TV tie-in edition. Absolutely fantastic. I loved this when I was a kid. I was the perfect age to be gripped by it, like most of the nation. There's John Dateen in the role there. A fantastic one, that. And then I've just got a few other odd B format editions of it, which Penguin have published over the years as a, a Penguin modern classic, which is another edition I particularly like this one. Really, really nice, that. And then um, that other sort of, a, almost like a fake Penguin edition, but it was given out um, as like a, a movie time, classics on film. 
um, by the Times newspaper. That was like a promo one, which wasn't actually for sale to the public. That one, it was just, well, it was a freebie, a given away freebie. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you some of my copies of Triffids. Excellent, excellent book, this, The Man in the High Castle. A pretty decent uh, TV adaption as well. Now, this is the uh, cover from by Peter Goodfellow from 1976. Definitely came out before then, but maybe that's the uh, the first sort of Penguin edition. Uh, this is one I don't recognise. Dark Carnival by Ray Bradbury. Very interesting sort of gothic -y cover, that one, isn't it? Certainly not one I recognise. Michael Ayrton, 1948. No, surely not. Where has this come from? I don't recognise that as a penguin. Hmm, the jury is out. <laughs> don't recognise that at all. Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle, ah, Fifth Planet. Now, they, they did quite a bit together, didn't they? That's a really nice uh, nice cover as well. Adrian Chesterman, 1979. Connoisseur's Science Fiction. Now that rings a bell. I think I did have a copy of Connoisseur's Science Fiction. And did I bring that one down with me? Um, so I did have my original copy of Connoisseur's Sci-Fi. And it was next to the Connoisseur's Crossword book. So, you know, say what you can about that. But... Um, Looking at the two, my original here is from uh, the, the 60s. The photograph on the cover is reproduced by permission of SO Research. So uh, obviously that's like something under a test tube, isn't it, by the look of it? Under a microscope, rather. 1964, that one. And then the later one, which they put in the postcard, which actually does look much more appealing. And uh, a really attractive cover there by Bob Folk from 1976. Interesting. Here's a, another John Wyndham. Uh, these are the editions I remember very much when I was a kid. This is Consider Her Ways and Others. And I did bring down my original edition of this. My Penguin copy from, well, when was this one from? Cover designed by Herbert Spencer. Nice little list of all the other ones that were in Penguin print at that point by Wyndham. This one's 1965. Well, it does sort of, yeah, in seven, and then this is 79, covered by Peter Lord. So a difference of 14 years, but you can see that the postcard is fantastic. And, and you know, these editions are really, really fantastic. And uh, you can understand why people like me, I think, collect all the different editions of Wyndham because they are such fun. Uh -huh, now that this is another edition of the same book we saw earlier, Ape Man Spaceman. And the penguin is in between an SF there in the logo. 1979, Adrian Chesterman. Here's another classic, Chucky, John Wyndham. I'm glad these are turning out. Frederick Poole, Alternating Currents. Another great jacket there. Not one I've got. Eric Hartman. Another J.G. Ballard. I'm quite frustrated with myself that I didn't bring any down because I've definitely got at least a couple um, in penguin form. Uh, the Four Dimensional Nightmare. That's a good one, isn't it? David Pelham, 77. Another Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle, The Inferno. 79, that one. Sirius, Olaf Stapledon. Adrian Chesterman, 1979. John Boyd, The Pollinators of Eden. That's a lovely jacket, that one, isn't it? And one I did actually, I do actually own that one. I've got that one here. So let's uh, dig that one out. So here's my original copy of this one. It is one that um, 
is past my usual period for collecting penguins, but the cover was so nice. This is why I have started picking up the uh, the penguin cipher, and you'll notice it's these are so so difficult to get with their black spines, you know, not hammered. This one looks like it's been unread, covered by Peter Cross. There we are, yeah, it's seventy pence. Published by Penguin in 1978. So there we are. Got a little preface to the Penguin edition there. And I think if you can pick up books from this period with that, that black spine and you find them in nice condition, you're doing very well because they, they're just not out there. They are tough to find now. You need to get lucky. The Book of Imaginary Beings. Bourget Louise Borges. What a great jacket that is. There's a lot going on on that, which is always fun for me. Peter Goodfellow. And another look, Penguin Sci-Fi Omnibus, edited by Brian Aldiss. So I wonder once again, if that's the three original books that we saw all put into one. I certainly wouldn't be surprised. Peter Jones from 1973. Paul and Corbluth, Search the Sky. Nice one. Very 70s, that, 1979. And this one's interesting. So they have got the much more common film tie-in edition to Monkey Planet by Pierre Boulle. And right on top here, I've got the original Penguin edition now. This is awful compared to that but it, it, this was the first one this was before the movie so um what was this first published so published in france of course in 63 the british edition in 64 and this penguin edition in 66 and when did the first movie come out it was probably a year later but this was the uh the 70s one from 75, but by then there'd already been, what, three or four Planet of the Apes movies? And uh, I think 75 was when the TV show was released. So, um, yeah, cool, cool stuff. The Penguin World Omnibus of Science Fiction, edited by Brian Aldiss. Another one I've not seen. I had no idea there were so many different editions of this. 1986, it says, something like that. Time and again, Clifford Simak, Clifford D. Simak, covered by Alan Aldridge. Let's just have a little pause there. I think we're going to pull the camera out once more. Right then, moving on. Arthur C. Clarke of Time and Stars. Definitely got no Arthur C. Clarke in uh, Old Penguin. Definitely got him in lots of other publishers, predominantly Corgi in the UK, but this is uh, covered by Peter Jones, 1984. Pulsar 2, George Hay, 1979. And now this one we have already looked at, which was the, the Time Machine, an absolute classic. Brilliant, brilliant book and uh, a favourite, yeah, 1946. John Boyd, The Rake Hells of Heaven. Cover painting by Peter Cross, 1978. Interworld. That's interesting, isn't it? Adrian Chesterman, 1980. Another John Boyd, The Girl with the Jade Green Eyes. Well, that rings a bell, you know. I think I might have that one, but I don't think in that edition. 1979, Peter Cross, with a design by Neil Stewart. Pauline Gidge, Gidge author of The Eagle and the Raven, Stargate. Hmm. wonder if that's what the movie and then show was based on. I don't know. Ray Bradbury again, The Day It Rained Forever. I've got quite a bit of Ray Bradbury, but it's in um, American first. Adrian Chesterman. Another one I don't recognise. It looks very 80s, doesn't it? Rudy Brooker, Software. <laughs> yeah, 1985. That would have been part of the uh, 
the home computer boom, I'm guessing. The Traps of Time, Michael Moorcock. Lovely cover, that one. By Alan Adrian Chesterman again, 1979. Another Ray Bradbury, The Day It Rained Forever. These are 80s ones, aren't they? Keith Roberts, Pervain. David O'Connor, 1988, that one. Another one, Olaf Stapledon, Star Maker. I've got one by Stapledon here, actually, which, uh, why don't we have a look at that one while we're here? It's a Sirius. I'm not sure if we've actually had that one on postcard form before it, but there it is. Man. Quite a nice tight, tight one, that. 1964. A little bit of Page Edge Browning, but we won't hold that against it. Is she well? Selected short stories. I've got this, but in a much earlier edition than this one. Yeah, this is from 68. I've got one uh, much earlier than that. A different jacket than that, I should say. More Women of Wonder. Oh, yeah. Science fiction novelettes by women about women. Adrian Chesterman did that cover. And this is looks, uh, pretty out there, doesn't it? William Gibson, Pattern Recognition. That's cool, it's like on a CD-ROM. 2003, that's the, definitely the most up-to-date one we've seen. Cover by Gray 318. Joseph O'Neill, Land Under England. Rodney Matthews, yeah, a recognizable name for the world of illustration, 1987. Jack L. Chalker, Midnight of the Well of Souls. 1982, Peter Goodfellow, Sheila McLeod, Xanthi and the Robots, 1979, Adrian Chesterman, We, 1980, a few of these I don't recognise, then we've got a bit more in my sort of period now, The Reefs of Space, Frederick Poole and Jake, Jack Williamson. Reefs of Space, 1969. Zena Henderson, The People, No Different Flesh. 1973, David Pelham. Another Philip K. Dick. The Three Stigmata of Palmer Aldrich. David Pelham. Another lovely uh, John Wyndham, Seeds of Time. Remember reading this particular one when I was uh, growing up. Peter Lord, Robert Sheckley, The Status Civilization. This is actually uh, listed as a puffin or published as a puffin, The Lost World. Arthur Conan Doyle. I did think about pulling a couple of puffins over that sort of you could consider as science fiction or fantasy even, um, not least of which The Hobbit. Um, but I didn't actually bother because I did cover that one in my puffin book. But I did pull one down, which uh, we might as well take a look at now, which is much more fantasy than science fiction. It's the this Mervyn Peak Titus box set. Um, let's pull these books out. Really nice edition. It's had this quite a while. Penguin Modern Classics. Really, really nice uh, jackets on these. I always like Mervyn Peake, of course, because um, he designed the first Pan Books logo. But this is interesting. So this one um, is the first Penguin Modern Classics edition, 1970. This particular one. But usually in box sets, they're not always first editions. They're usually a bit of a mishmash. So yeah, that was a reprint from... This one came out in 1968 initially, but this is the 1970 edition. And then Gormagast itself. Yeah, the 1970 reprint. But one of them was a first. And uh, 
if you never read the, the actual trilogy, they're fantastic. Um, but you wouldn't really call them sci-fi, but I thought, well, I haven't really ever shown this on the channel before, and I thought, well, it's probably a good, as good an opportunity as any to get a bit of a uh, Mervyn Peak in on the action. <laughs> and it is a particularly nice uh, box set. I love the Penguin Modern Classics, I really do. They're a fantastic uh, list to collect. Let's stick that one over there. Right then, where were we? So we haven't got many left to go, probably got about 20, and I've probably got about 15 original books to show. So we're near the end now. So Pool and Corn Bluff, The Space Merchants, Arkada and Boris's Strugatsky Roadside Picnic. I'm guessing this is, uh, what, Russian sci-fi? <laughs> 1979. Kite World, Keith Roberts. 1986, covered by David O'Connor. Harry Harrison, there's a reissue of Make Room, Make Room. 80s edition, yeah. Of course, he would have been hot in the world of sci-fi with his stainless steel rat books at that time. Fred and Jeffrey Hoyle, Seven Steps to the Sun. Adrian Chesterman, Olaf Stapledon, Last and First Men. That one I do actually, I did bring down my Penguin original of that one. Here we are, so this is the first Penguin edition of The Last and First Men, and that's the uh, the later one there for the postcard. I think the original's actually better. I prefer the original. Nice copy of that one, a little bit of foxing, but pretty nice all the same. A 19, so yeah, published in Pelican in 1937 and reprinted as a Penguin in 1963. So that is the uh, the one that came out. I think it was Pelican number three or something like that. <laughs> um, there's a copy of The Invisible Man, not the first, which is the one that we showed earlier, but uh, a later edition from uh, 1946. And oh, I am glad they've got this one because this is a classic. Um, that is 1984 by George Orwell. Um, that's the edition from 1983. I am after the edition of 1984 that was published in 1984. <laughs> um, I, I did bring down a few copies of that for us to have a look at. So um, here's the first edition, the first Penguin edition. Um, not to the same degree as Dare the Triffids, but George Orwell, as an author, I do absolutely admire and really, really love to this day. And uh, 1984 has had a few particularly great covers for it. That one was 1954. And there's this version here, which was, uh, I think they call it, it's like the engine room cover, which I'm surprised. In fact, well, they may still, they may still be reprinted in this postcard box set. The control room, yeah, Civil Defense Headquarters. So that edition, mine's dated 66. Then they did this one here, last one I got, which was, a, I think, a really great uh, jacket here. You can see 1984, but it's like blocked out. But you can just sort of see the sort of raised bits there. 2013, that one came out. That's, that's a classic. Hot on its heels, another one that I love, uh, The Crack and Wakes. John Wyndham, and once again, I brought a few of those down with me. So there's the first edition of the Crack and Wakes, the first Penguin edition. Got a little train ticket in as well, by the look of it. <laughs> 1955. Then there's the edition that's on the postcard here. Great book, this. Um, you know, I do love it almost as much as Triffids. And that jacket there is 1962, that particular edition. And while we're here, we have got another one, which I don't know um, if it's been covered yet. No, we haven't had this, have we? The Death of Grass, John Christopher, another sort of sci-fi, sci-fi one about the world. Uh, an I'm sure it's an ecological disaster, this particular one. 1958, that Penguin edition. It's pretty cool, isn't it? 
back to the last few postcards. So we've got Robert Heinlein, Citizen of the Galaxy, 1981. Frederick Hoyle, The Black Cloud, 1972. And look at this, Invincible. Yeah, 2007, Brian Hitch. Ah, oh, look. The Chrysalids. This is the edition I first ever read this one in. Peter Lord, 1986. Oh, they've included this one, sort of The War in the Air, but once again, it was sort of early speculative fiction by H.G. Wells. 1941, that edition. The Sci-Fi of Edgar Allan Poe. That's quite nice. I haven't got that one. Part of the Penguin English Library. 1982. Never come across that one. The Midweek Cuckoos. Absolutely great stuff. 1967. Paul Hogarth did that jacket. Fritz Leiber. The Wanderer. 1976. Pull Through, Zone, 1987, Thieves World, edited by Robert Asprin, a sci-fi stroke fantasy anthology, H.G. Wells again, Men Like Gods, ah, I wasn't sure if they were going to include a Quatermass, this is Quatermass and the Pit, I did bring down one which was the Quatermass Experiment, but Penguin did um, three, so what was, the, what was the third one? It was was it just called? Um, I think it was just called Quatermass. Then the Quatermass experiment. Then Quatermass in the pit. Good stuff. Another James Blish, Black Easter or Faust, Alpha Null. Peter Lord cover. Another absolutely fantastic one, The Trouble with Lycan. Brilliant, John Wyndham. Woman creates a, a woman scientist creates a, a potion to stop you. Oh, it's more a cream in actual fact that stops you aging. Really cool. And the last postcard we got is the island of Dr. Moreau, which I also ummed and ahed about bringing down, but I thought we well, can't bring them all down. So it's 1971. Um, but that was all the postcards, but I have got a small pile of other cool sci-fi to show you, um, which is, we got The Black Cloud, Fred Hoyle, science fiction by a scientist. There he is there. 1960. And we got some more of these classic purple penguin sci-fis with their super difficult to get perfect spines <laughs> getting their black covers so these are so hard to find in nice condition because they got black covers it's as simple as that so this is penguin 2454 1966 cover photograph by stokes stroke common gunner cade cyril judd 2460. Paul and Corn uh, Bluth, Wolf Bane. Eric Frank Russell, Somewhere a Voice. All cool stuff, aren't they, these? Another cool one, Frederick and Jeffrey Hall, Fifth Planet. Lovely cover with the uh, sort of the space helmet there. David Pelham jacket on that one. So it's probably early 70s or late 60s. So, well, this is a reprint, this one. So it did come out in 65 originally, but this one with this jacket was 1974. And the last one we've got is obviously the classic, which is another... Um, classic David Pelham cover, and it's uh, to A Clockwork Orange, which you know, is a borderline sci-fi. Cool stuff. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that little look through my collection of Penguin Science Fiction, as well as that rather fantastic Penguin Science Fiction postcard box set. 
If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it that thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage Penguin book content. And I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.